my concept of freedom. The value of a thing lies sometimes not in what one attains with it, but in what one pays for it. What it costs us. I give an example. Liberal institutions immediately cease to be liberal as soon as they are attained. Afterwards, there are no more mischievous or more radical enemies of freedom than liberal institutions. One knows well enough what they accomplish. They undermine the will to power. They are the leveling of mountain and valley exalted into morality. They make people small, cowardly and voluptuous. With them the herding animal always triumphs. Liberalism, that means increased herding animals. The same institutions produce quite different results as long as they are fought for. They then, in fact, further the cause of freedom in a powerful manner. On looking more accurately, we see that it is warfare which produces these results. Warfare for liberal institutions, which, as war, allows illiberal instincts to continue. And warfare educates for freedom. For what is freedom? To have the will to be responsible for oneself. To keep the distance which separates us. To become more indifferent to hardship, severity, privation and even to life. To be ready to sacrifice men for one's cause, oneself not accepted. Freedom implies that manly instincts, instincts which delight in war and triumph, dominate over other instincts. For example, over the instincts of happiness. The man who has become free, and how much more the spirit which has become free, treads underfoot the contemptible species of well-being dreamt of by shopkeepers, Christians, cows, women, Englishmen and other Democrats. The free man is a warrior. How is freedom measured in individuals as well as in nations? By the resistance which has to be overcome. By the effort which it costs to retain superiority. We should have to seek the highest type of free men where the highest resistance is constantly overcome. Five paces from tyranny close to the threshold of the danger of servitude. This is psychologically true when we mean by tyrants pitiless and frightful instincts which peremptorily call forth the maximum authority and discipline. The finest example is Julius Caesar. It is also politically true. We only need to look at the course of history. The people who were worth something, who became worth something, never acquired their greatness under liberal institutions. Great danger made something out of them, which deserves reverence. Danger which first teaches us to know our resources, our virtues, our shield and sword, our genius, which compels us to be strong. First principle. Men must require strength, otherwise they never attain it. Those great hot houses for the strong, the strongest species of man that has hitherto existed, the aristocratic commonwealths of the pattern of Rome and Venice, understood freedom precisely in the sense in which I understand the word, as something which one has and has not as something which one desires, which one wins by conquest.